Since summer media films were in an era of using backlog material, it seems only appropriate that the next film would be a remake. Secret of the Stone House was an infinitely more interesting film than Portrait of a Lady, and proved to everyone that Mr. Clark was right. Again, the subject matter could be entertaining. We met in a small grove of trees, not far from the main house, beyond father's view. It seemed terrible, meeting in secret. You proposed to me. I was torn. How could our marriage solve anything? Hugh was convinced that once we were man and wife, father would have to recognize our love for each other. I was hesitant, but Hugh insisted he loved me and we must marry. What's this? Jeff? The marrying type? One probably didn't think so back then. Right, Gwen? 1976, the bicentennial, the 20th anniversary of America's proclamation of independence from Mother England. So what does Summer Media do a film about? The Indians. The declarations of this boy were not sufficient proof. If indeed this lad were Eulatine, he must be tested and he must pass every test. Without a moment's hesitation, the lad accepted the challenge he would undergo any test Tishomingo imposed. And so, the Salish tribesmen began to measure the power of the Indian boy. The ever-popular Mike May sticks a white feather in his cap and calls it eulogy. We haven't yet figured out what to call this. <laughs> Nineteen seventy-seven. Mr. Clark creates two roles, which again survive a number of reincarnations. Dan Oceanwriter and Sean W. Murphy become Phantomos. lines in this film that Dan still recites. I'm 15 years old. Uh, the next year brings us to the first year of a Cinekid summer program. Uh, consequently, in 1978, two summer films were made. Upper Moreland Media creates an odd film, The Laugh Factory. This is the film most often used as blackmail. You just can't beat Kevin Clapper as Charlie Chaplin, Paul Salfi as Zorro, Todd Gray as the Sheik, Julie Pipple as Pauline, or Sean and Matt Leonard as Laurel and Hardy. Dan tries the hard sell. Forget the hard sell. Ollie tries firm reasoning. Cinekid's first summer film was based on an earlier summer media series as Astrakhan the Cinekid movie starts shooting. John Lore has the title role with frizzed out hair. Oh, and the neat costume has changed colors. Bill Thomas wears the funny mustache and John Peterson wears the silly suit. Jeff, of course, has moved up in the world. 1979 saw the sequel to Phantomos go into production. The Black Rose brought back Sean and Dan to save America from Mark Booth and Julie Pipple. It doesn't sound too difficult, does it? But they're playing for keeps. Staff member Ed Kowalczyk is already dead. Senekid was working on a serial. Marty Wilson kept his hair long in most of the scenes and lifted weights to portray Simba, the wildling. This was the summer that Senekid staged one of the most dangerous scenes in its 10-year history. Who were the victims? Dan and Carol Conrad.
fine, eh? This was also the last summer that Mr. Clark and the staff would be stupid enough to do two films in one year. It was simply too much. So, next year the energies were combined into one film. Super 8 Sync Sound was used to create the award-winning Whiplash. Molly Rogers. It's been a long time. Yes, it has. Hey, Diablo, look at all this food. Shut up. But I thought we I were... said shut up. All these children. I'm a school teacher. You take care of all these children? Yes, I do. All these children, all this food, all this happiness. We had no such happiness when I was a child. Take good care of the children, Molly Rogers. Adios. Joe Klusman, Brian Baker, Mike May, and a cast of thousands star in the first student-produced Western. Peggy Rastiello has the death scene she always wanted. And when Joe and Jill weren't working their asses off in front of the camera, they tended to be off in the dark room, developing and enlarging. And of course, corrupting little David. Very little David. Speaking of David Trachtenberg, he starred in the next summer's movie as the problem child who had, among his few friends, a 50-foot teddy bear. Guess you stopped rowing. Wow, you must be 50 feet tall. A Gargantua also brought Scott Wolfson one of his most famous roles. That of Dr. Ratman. Dr. Ratman, I presume. Ratman. Ratman! Super 8 Millimeter was on its way out, and the home video business was taking over in 1983.